Okay, welcome back. Here I'm going to do a quick model for a nonlinear beam. Sorry, for a beam subjected to geometric nonlinearity. So I do that very quick. By now, you should be, you don't know what I'm doing here. So it would be 10.5 to the 6 and 0 0.3. This is aluminum. Okay, cancel properties, new. So aluminum here, we're gonna use beam. Where is the beam here? Okay, I'm gonna use here a, sh a shape. Rectangular is gonna be a height of one, a width of 12 to simplify everything. We make this going up and okay, okay. All right, now we're gonna create the geometry. So geometry, curve line, project points. And I always try to use the same dimensions on my problem. So 0 to 60, okay, control A. Now mesh, mesh control size along curve. We're gonna put 60 elements, so one every inch. Cancel, mesh geometry curve. We select this one, this one. And basically this says that the 12 is gonna be the width and the one would be the height. Okay, so we need to do this and one. Okay, so it would be this way. And okay, you can check that if you want by pressing here, thickness, you see the way this would look, okay? So F8, X, Y, okay. And let me remove that one. All right, so model constraint. Uh, okay, so we're gonna use two, Two cases for the constraints. So this is the important part. So not all. First, we're going to do simply supported and a roller. And you will understand now. So basically, this one will be simply supported, meaning that cannot can rotate, but cannot have any displacement. And now this one will be the same, but we're going to let it move on the X. Okay. Now model load, we're gonna apply the distributed load. So elemental, so you can put it that or not. Select all, okay. Distributed load, so it would be 50 and 50. Okay, pounds per inch and okay. Here doesn't matter which one you choose. All right. So this here file, save us. I uh, have a bunch of models. I already did this one, but this. So let's say here, simply supported new. Order. This is for the video. All right, let me call this one model. Save. All right. So that's it. Now, model load. We use in nonlinear analysis. Static. We do. We're going to break the load into 20. Displacement here 0 0.001. This is the value that works good. If you put an extra zero, sometimes it gives a problem for convergence. This one, you can put whatever you want, but generally, this is the default. I like to show all the intermediate steps and method really doesn't matter here. So, okay. All right. So now we go to analysis, manage new. So let's say this would be roller. Next, 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 next. Okay, I think it's the next one that we need to pay attention. We define that on the other one. You see here, these values were the defaults. All right, so next. Uh, maybe I should put it here on the loading. Okay, next. And here we're gonna say to this calculate the equation force and force balance. All right, and analyze.
Okay, so did run this did run pretty quick. Here we go. All right. And now if you want, what should happen is that we should see actually, even though we run the nonlinear, we should see a linear result. Okay. So we're gonna go here to the sharding. Um gonna create a new one. We're gonna say versus set. I put set value, and we're gonna look at the T2 translation at the center node. So let's see what would that be. Oops. All right, so I don't know which one would it be. So let's see if that would work here. Let's see if we can deform. All right, so one, two. Let's say it would be. Oh, okay, so the 60 should be 31, I'm guessing, okay? And okay. All right, so you see basically we got a straight line that goes to about 0.8 something. I mean, we can find it and we can take it, okay. Oh, we put again the same thing, so cancel, done. All right, so it's the same curve over here. If we really want another value here, we should come over here at five. Uh, we can go to criteria deform. Deform, let's say total translation, contour, total translation. This one, one, okay, okay. All right, so about 0 0.803, and this will be the deformation. And you see everything is linear. But what's important over here is that let's act deactivate for simplicity. The result, let's eliminate the load, okay? And let's eliminate the deformation. All right, let's see what is here, the forces. And basically the only force should be here is the reactions over here at the two ends. So we go here to Post-processing, all right, free body. Create over here, new free body. We just want just to have the reactions or applied. All right, free body, done. So basically uh, free body, entity selections. So we could come at this element, and uh, let's say this element here, okay. And basically, uh, we should do that on the node, but basically you see it's just reaction up and down, up and down. Here, this is a small one to the left, but here should be just up and down, okay? Because basically what happens is that the beam can expand over here freely. All right, and the response was linear. So basically the difference is, let me redo this. Let's just select, oops, or uh, reset. Let's just select this one, okay. You see here just a reaction going down and they actually should be 1500. Uh, just taking the average on the elements. All right, so let's close this, come here. And now we're gonna do the same thing over here, but this time we're gonna define a second constraint. New. So let's say this time will be simply supported, simply supported. All right, so over here, model constraint, not all, and here we're gonna put the same two constraints on both sides. So basically pin. So now what's gonna happen is that the beam as it's moving, it won't be able to expand in that direction. So the X movement will be restrained. And that is what is gonna create the nonlinearity because the beam here is gonna become stiffer as the deformation becomes larger. All right, so, okay. Uh, I guess we will do that. Cancel, here we go. 
the load should be in there. All right, so let's see, we can create a new analysis here. Okay, so right, maybe save this one here. And now file save us. Simply support it. And before I run the analysis, let me just delete the data over here. Okay. And maybe call this one here. Simply support it. And okay. And let's go and analyze. All right, so that was pretty quick. All right, so let's see now what we have. So let's see. So that looks like it's linear now. Uh, but it's just showing this one or everything. But let me see what's going on here. This doesn't look correct. So I think what happened is that we did not run the appropriate one. I think I know what happened. Let me just do this. Okay, so I think once we go to into the analysis here, it did not change the boundary condition. So for example, go here next, 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 and next. So this is correct. You see here, conditional constraint. We have the first one of the roller. We didn't go to this one. So okay, and analyze. So that's good. At least you will see the difference. When you have the roller, the answer is the response is linear. And now we got the same thing here. And hopefully we get something that is nonlinear over here. Okay. So over here, you see the answer about point between 0 0.45, 0 0.78. And when it was the linear, that's at 50 over here, a lot of one. And with the roller, it's about 0.8. And I always like to check my result with uh, my program over here that I have. Uh, you might not see it. So basically, it's, a, it's about the same thing. So this, we only show the nonlinear. And I think the linear as well. So I'll run it very quick. It goes over here. It's solved in the model domain instead of the static domain, but the result should be the same. So instead of 20 nodes, so basically I have these ones, you see is what? This is the linear response. So this will be the case of the roller, which is about 0.8 something and between 0.478. So actually I have 0 0.8035 for the linear, 0 0.4783 for the nonlinear, so we can actually go if you want and check over here with the FIMAP. So let's see, F5 criteria before. Okay. So 0 0.803, which is almost identical. And if we go to the simply supported, let's do F5 criteria deform. Okay. We get 0.475. Uh, what do we have here? About 0 0.78, okay? So it's pretty close. So again, what's important over here to notice is that you only will have the nonlinear behavior if you restrain the X deformation here, okay? So you see over here what happened. Now, due to this not able to move, it creates a large force over here of 19,762. So just imagine, this is like kind of, uh, it's the reverse of buckling, but it's like, uh, it's like concrete. You have, uh, you can put the pre-stress or pre-strain concrete 
with a pelt steel bar in the middle and they pull them apart because if you pull them apart, they're going to be a little bit stiffer. Okay, I'll cover that in, an, in another video. So here you see you need to be careful because just depending on the boundary conditions, one problem might need to be analyzed using nonlinear solution. But if this is a router, you could use the linear solution, okay, and save some time. Thank you for your attention.